Hello everyone, welcome back to one of my videos. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on something called matrices and we're going to uh, delve into what it is and I'm going to show you a couple of operations that you can use. Uh, mostly we will be adding and subtracting and we're going to do something called scalar multiplication. Now I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. As you know by now you should be able to find the notes section or the PDF that has the notes. What I need you to do is go get the blank copy and uh, take notes along with me. Um, we should be in school now so this should be uh, maybe we've been back to school a couple of weeks so I should be giving you paper copies of these notes if you are in in-person class. If you're virtual uh, I'm going to have packets that you can pick up from the school you can find them in the in the main office or you can text me and I can bring you down a copy if you're at the school but if you're gonna pick them up it has to be on a Wednesday um, or if you come into the school you can ask the front office to make sure that they have copies other than that uh, like I said take notes along with me at the end of the video I'm going to ask you to take a picture of your completed notes and upload them to Google Classroom so that I can give you credit for watching this video. So to begin we're going to talk about matrices and a matrice can be defined as a rectangular array of data in rows and columns and the the data is is put around in rows and columns and then if you look at a specific number inside of the array or inside of the matrix we call them the elements so the elements are the individual numbers in the matrix and matrix is the plural version of matrix next the rows and columns so the rows are just the horizontal elements so going from left to right get horizontal elements and that goes from left to right and the columns are the vertical elements and that goes top to bottom and uh, whenever we talk about matrices we also have to talk about the dimensions of a matrix the dimensions of a matrix it's identified by the number of rows and columns but the rows are stated first always so again the dimensions it identifies the matrix by the number of rows and columns and we have that the rows are stated first so if we look down we have an example so Sue and Eva have made a table of their science quiz grades and what we're going to do is we're going to try and create a matrix to organize the data so what I'm going to have, I'm going to have a row for Sue and a row for Eva. So this is my matrix. I'm going to have a row for Sue and a row for Eva. And then if you look at the table, there's only three possible like possibilities. They either have an A, a B, or a C. So those are going to be the names for my columns. So I'm going to have a, B, and C. 
And then inside of the matrix, what we're going to have to do is find the information that needs to go there. So if I look at this first slot here, I have Sue and A. So I need to look and see how many times Sue earned an A. So if I look, we have one, two, three, four. It looks like four times. So that means that our first entry is going to be four. Then I go to Eva. How many times did she get an A? Well, here's one, two, three, four, five. So that means that five is going to be our entry for this slot. Next, I'm going to go back up to Sue. How many times did she get a B? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five. How many times did Eva get a B? One, two, three, four, five, six. And finally, how many times did Sue get a C? We have one, two, three. And Eva has one. So our matrix is going to be just this part. So just things inside the brackets, and we also include the brackets. And the, the dimension, remember, it's going to be the row by the column. So how many rows are there? There's two rows. And then we put an X for times or by and how many columns well you should say there's three columns so we have a two by three matrix where the dimensions of this matrix are two by three moving on to the identifying elements portion so the way that we can look at elements is that we have a capital X and then in the subscript or little letters we have a comma B. So we use this as a common way to identify a specific element where A is the row and B is the column. So for example if we look at uh, number three here we have element X one comma two so that means we would go to the first row and we would go to the second column and that corresponds to three so that means three would be our answer for number four I'm gonna erase this stuff over here we have element three comma two so we go to row three we go to the second column and we find that 9 is our element for this one. Number 5 we have element 2 comma 4 so ele element 2 comma 4 means we do we go to the second row and the fourth column so that means that 11 should be our element that we're looking for. Then we have element 1 comma 3 so that means we go to row one and we look at column three and it's a one okay so now for seven eight nine and ten we're going backwards so we're gonna look at this number we're gonna find it in our matrix okay negative five is here and we're gonna determine what row and what column it is so it's gonna be row three column four because it's in the third row and it's in the fourth column so that means that this element is X then we put in the subscript parentheses three comma four next number eight we're looking for negative two it is right here it's in the second row and the first column so that means that we're gonna have X and then 
two comma one. Okay. Number nine, we're looking for seven. So again, we're looking for this number. We go over to the matrix. We're looking for seven. It's here. What row is it? Three. And what column is it? One. So that means we have X, then three, comma, one. Finally, number 10, we're looking for negative eight. Negative eight is right here. What row and column? Well, you should say row two, column two. So we have row two, column two, and that's where negative eight is. So we have x, two, comma, two. And finally, we're looking for the dimensions of matrix M. So how many rows does it have? Well, three. And how many columns? Four. And I told you to write it as three by four. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. And we'll move on to the second page. So earlier I told you that we're able to add or subtract matrices. Earlier, I told you that we are able to add or subtract matrices. But there's some caveats to that. So we have that matrices must have the same dimensions. And you should know how to find a dimension of a matrix. And in order to add or subtract, what you do is just add or subtract the corresponding the corresponding elements. So we're going to try that a couple of times. So if we look at number 12, we're giving, given all the matrices up here. So we're looking at B and D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write them out. So I have matrix B, which is negative 12, negative 5, 16, 9, negative 1, 2. And I'm adding that to matrix D, which is negative 14, 1, 10, 0, negative 5, and 9. First thing you have to look for, are they the same dimension? Well, if you look at these, they're both dimension 3, by 2 so you are able to add or subtract and then I told you that you just add or subtract the corresponding elements so that means that you're gonna add the the elements that are in the same spot inside the matrix so if we look here we have the top left corner which is negative 12 and the top left corner of negative 14 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add negative 12 and negative 14 and we're going to get the answer negative 26 and that's our new top left corner next let's go ahead and mark through these so in the, we know that we've already added them we have 9 and 0 9 plus 0 is 9 and it just goes in the same spot negative 5 and 1 negative 5 and 1. Well, negative 5 plus 1 gives us negative 4. So we have our answer for middle left. We have negative 1 and negative 5. If we add those, we have negative 1 plus negative 5, which gives us a negative 6. And we're done with those. So our first two rows are finished. We have one row remaining. We have 16 and 10. If we add those two things together, we have 16 plus 10, which is 26. And that goes into our bottom left corner. And finally, we have 2 
and 9. 2 plus 9 is 11, and that goes into our bottom right corner. And then this is our new matrix. So this is matrix B plus D. Or in other words, it's our final answer. So this next one I'm not going to write out. Uh, so I'm not going to write what A is and what B is. We're just going to use the picture or use the information that's given to us. So we have B minus A. First thing we have to check, do the dimensions look the same? B is a two by or sorry, B is a three by two, and A is a three by two. So the dimensions are the same. So we can now start doing the, the subtraction. So we have B minus A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write or give the structure for our matrix. All right, B. We have negative twelve minus seven. Well, that gives us negative 12 minus 7 is negative 19. And we're done with that. Next one is 9 minus 19. 9 minus 19 gives us negative 10. And we're done with that one. We have negative 5 minus 4. Well, negative 5 minus 4 gives us negative 9. Then we have negative 1 minus negative 6. Negative 1 minus negative 6 is the same thing as negative 1 plus 6. And negative 1 plus 6 gives us a positive 5. We have 16 minus negative 1. 16 minus negative 1 is the same thing as 16 plus 1. And 16 plus 1 gives us 17. Then finally we have 2 minus negative 2. 2 minus negative 2 is the same thing as 2 plus 2. And 2 plus 2 is 4. So that means that B minus A is this matrix right here. Moving on to number 14, we have C plus B. First thing we have to check do the dimensions match? Well, C is dimension 2 by 3, and B is dimension 3 by 2. Well, does that work out? Are they the same? No. So that means that it's our easiest answer so far, and we just put no solution. And you're going to have to tell me why. And you're going to say dimensions do not match. Alright, and then you're going to try number 15 by yourself and make sure that you have it completed by the time you turn this in. Okay, so moving on to the final part. This is scalar multiplication. It, it might sound scary, but it's perfectly fine. And we say that a matrix can be multiplied by a scalar or in this case it's any real number. Scalar is just a fancy word for it. And we do that by multiplying the scalar to each separate element. So for number 16 we have 4C. 4C, uh, in order to do that we're going to take 4 and we're going to multiply it by what C is. C is a matrix, so we're going to write it out. C was 1, 2, 13, negative 8, negative 4, and 7. And in order to figure this out, we're going to take the 4, and we're going to multiply it by each of these numbers. And then that number is just going to replace where it was. So we have that this is equal to, well, we have 4 times 1, that's 4. 4 times 2, 8. 4 times 13, that is 52. And we're done with 1, 2, and 13. We have 4 times negative 8, that gives us negative 32. 
let's not mark out the 4 yet. And then we have 4 times negative 4. Neg that gives us negative 16. And then 4 times 7, which is 28. And we're done. So that means that this is our new matrices using scalar multiplication. I want you to try number 17 by yourself. Moving on, we have something called a linear combination of two matrices and what that means is we're, we're having scalar multiplication and addition or subtraction all at the same time. So let's write this out. We have 3D, so 3 times the matrix D, which was negative 14, 1, 10, 0, negative 5, 9. And then we're going to add B to it, and B was negative 12, negative 5, 16, 9, negative 1, and 2. Now we still have to follow order of operations, so that means that we're going to have to do the multiplication first and then the addition. So let's go ahead and work on the, the scalar multiplication here. So we have 3 times negative 14. 3 times negative 14 is going to be negative 42. Then we have 3 times 1, which was 3. 3 times 10, which is 30. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And 3 times 9 is 27. So that's that, uh, that is the scalar multiplication done. So we can mark through that. Now we have to add the we have to add B. So we have negative 12, 5, 16, 9, negative 1, 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our final answer over here just to, because I wrote a little bit too big for this. So I'm going to put my answer over here into this space here. But the first thing before we do anything is to make sure that our dimensions match. So this is a 3 by 2 and that one is a 3 by 2. So that means that we can add or subtract. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new matrix over here. And again, it's going to be a 3 by 2. And then we're going to add our corresponding elements. So we have negative 42 plus negative 12. That's negative 54. So we're done with these two. 0 plus 9. Well, that's just 9. 3 plus negative 5. 3 plus negative 5 is the same thing as 3 minus 5. And 3 minus 5 gives us negative 2. Then we have negative 15 plus negative 1. Negative 15 plus negative 1 is the same thing as negative 15 minus 1, which gives us negative 16. Then we have 30 plus 16, that gives us 46. And finally we have 27 plus 2, which gives us 29. So this is our answer for number 18. So now we'll go through number 19. And in order to save some space, I'm just I'm not going to write out D or B. I'm going to look up to the top where it gave it to us before. So we have 5 times D. D was a 3 by 2. So we're going to multiply everything that was inside of D by 5. So we have 5 times negative 14. That gives us negative 70. 5 times 1 gives us 5. 5 times 10 is 50. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times negative 5, negative 25. 
and 5 times 9 is 45. Next we're subtracting and then we have 2b. That means we're multiplying every element inside of b by 2. So we have 2 times negative 12 which is negative 24. 2 times negative 5 which is negative 10. 2 times 16 which is 32. 2 times 9 which is 18. 2 times negative 1 which is negative 2. And 2 times 2 which was 4. Next we have to check that the dimensions are the same. So we have a 3 by 2 and a 3 by 2. So that means that we can add or subtract. In this case we're having to subtract. So we have negative 70 minus negative 24. That's the same thing as negative 70 plus 24. So our answer should be negative 46. Then we have 0 minus 18. That gives us negative 18. Then we have 5. Sorry, let's mark these out since we're done with them. 5 minus negative 10. Well, if you subtract negative, it turns into a positive. So we have 5 plus 10, which gives us 15. We're done with these two. We have negative 25 minus negative 2. If you subtract a negative, you add. So negative 25 plus 2 gives us negative 23. We have 50 minus 32. Well, that is 18. And finally, we have 45 minus 4, which gives us 41. And that's going to be our answer. So again, I tasked you with completing number 17, number 15, and then on the front page, nothing. So I asked you to complete number 17 and number 15 for whenever you submit this to Google Classroom. Make sure you have those finished to get your points. If you have any questions for me, please email me, text me, or if you're an in-person student, just ask me during class. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you next time.